we're using the JSB Match Diablo Exacts. Right hand piece of paper. So, first shot, bottom left hand target. To the gun locker. Now in front of me is Air Arms' TX 200HC. HC stands for Hunter Carbine. Um, carbine because it's got a short barrel. Now if you'd seen my season's greetings video um, you would have seen this as a spoiler alert. I finally managed to get my hands on a mint used version of this rifle and I was particularly looking for a used rifle because at the end of the day it's alright getting them new straight out of the box but we want to see how these guns perform with a little bit of age and you know how they stand up to the test of time and this is a prime example of just such a rifle and it is in mint condition there's not a mark on it, it's absolutely lovely so it's an underlever, it's a .177 and it's sub 12 foot pound now you guys, you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a fan of my HW77K, my Virac, and I use that rifle to set the bar. And in the course of the many reviews that have followed and the loads of comments that I've received online on my channel, I've had lots of people ask me, you know, when am I going to review the TX200 or they stated that in their opinion the TX200 is a far superior rifle to the 77 or the 97 um, produced by Virac. I'm not so sure. Now this review is going to come in three parts. You're going to have the technical specifications or technical data, you're going to have the um, accuracy and performance where you'll see me shooting this rifle outside and you're also going to have the design build element of it where I talk about things like aesthetics, ergonomics, um, safety, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So I think what I'd like to do is follow a similar format to what I've done in the past and give you a little bit of history on air arms. And the reason why I want to do that is because I'm going to make a point and it's a very valid point and this goes to all these guys that are stating you know that the TX200 is far superior to the HW77 or the 97 it'll all come clear so looking at Air Arms' website and going to their About Us page learning a little bit about the history you'll find out that the company was formed back in 1983 the founder, Bob Nichols, and his general manager, Colin King, were joined by Bill Sanders in the role of sales and marketing manager. Now, you're going to see me look down. I'm looking at my screen here. My memory is shocking, so apologies, but at least this way I'm going to get the gist, or I'm going to get across what I need to get across. So, it says on their website, and I quote, at the time, neither air guns themselves or the industry that produced them could be described as high tech, but this was about to change and air arms would lead the way. In 1988, the decision was made to purchase a pre-charged pneumatic, sorry, not purchase, to produce a pre-charged pneumatic rifle. And with the success rate of that decision, the company made another one. It would invest in computer numerically controlled production machinery. It's a CNC production machinery. By the mid-1990s, 
air arms had fully embraced the tremendous advantages of CNC production technology, expanding and refining its range of pre-charge and spring piston air rifles. World-class consultants such as Ken Turner and Nick Jenkinson provided further expertise and creativity and as product quality continued to rise and sales of air arms rifles rose alongside it, by the time the world awoke to a new millennium, the vision, expertise and countless hours of hard work invested by Bob Nichols, Colin King, Bill Sanders and the staff had taken air arms to the top where it's remained ever since. Bold statement, really, really bold statement. Two things to note here. Um, in that description, you may be led to believe that air arms produce everything that's on this rifle, okay? And I'm gonna be really critical here, and I'm sorry if people get upset with me, but hey, look, I'm just stating facts. What I'll say is, the stock is Italian, it's Manelli. The barrel is German, it's from Lofa Wolfer. The rest of it is what Air Arms produces. So, what would be nice is if these manufacturers actually explained what it is that they do and how they produce their rifles, as opposed to making an all embracing statement where they take full control and credit for everything that they produce and that's wrong. At the end of the day they are taking parts from different manufacturers and they are assembling it as a kit in order to send it out to the customer. And I'd also like to make the point that going back to what Air Arms have stated when the, comp when the company was founded in 1983, the HW77K produced by Virarc was launched that year. So Virarc had been around for a lot longer, their model had hit the market, it was winning competitions and then this came about or variants of this type of rifle came about basically back, piggybacking, I think that's fair to say, off the success of Virarc and its underlever rifles. So. To all of those that have said that you know the TX200 is the best rifle out there, um, personal opinion. And it may seem as if I'm coming across a little bit harsh here, but actually, if you give me time and follow the rest of the review to its end, you'll see that the scores are pretty similar, um, remarkably so, towards the end. But you know, these both guns now have been in production for a long time, for decades, and both versions have been tweaked along the way. Anyway, that's the history of air arms. So, let's talk technical specs. What we've got here, like I say, is the TX200 HC, the Hunter Carbine. Um, it comes in a number of variants. You've got the TX200, which has a barrel unit length of 395 millimeters. And I'm gonna refer back to that in a little bit because of the terminology that's being used here. I'm stressing barrel unit length. Um, you've got the TX200 Ultimate Springer, the TX200 HC Ultimate Springer, and then this Pro Sport. Now the Pro Sport is an underlever, but the underlever is housed within the forend not uh, proud of the forend. This rifle, which has been very kindly lent to me by Andy from um, AA Gunlocker in Stafford, is on sale, as you can see, with the scope and the moderator for £555 used in mint condition. Um, if you were to purchase this rifle new, without the scope, without the mod, Prices start from £719 and go upwards depending on the level of variance that you have, you know, what, what types of stocks that you have and, and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. But if you go onto Air Arms' website, you can get the full list of the rifles that they produce. As you can see, it's a traditional sporter. It's a spring piston um, air rifle, and obviously it has an underlever. And I'm gonna give you some measurements in a little bit. 
the available calibers 0.177 or 4.5 millimeters and 0.22 or 5.5 millimeters so you don't get any more than that now let's talk about dimensions so from the butt to the muzzle end not to the moderator that's 980 millimeters or 38.58 inches if you were to include the moderator that takes it up to 1163 millimeters or 45.79 inches the center of balance is actually quite a way forward because this here towards the front end of the rifle is actually very heavy so the center of balance from the butt is roughly where my finger is and that's at 510 millimeters or 20.08 inches without the mod include the mod and that takes it out to 525 millimeters or 20.67 inches and the reach from the butt to the trigger is 360 mil or 14.17 inches I'll talk about that a little bit later but for me that's just a tad short weight unscoped without the moderator um, is coming in at four kilos slightly heavier than the weight advertised by air arms on uh, its website nonetheless four kilos it's 8.82 pounds so as I've already said, the stock is Italian, it's made by Minelli. Um, this one's a beach and it has, I believe, a rosewood cap to it. It has an Anschutz style grip and it has a rollover cheek piece. I'm going to put that round because this is not an ambidextrous rifle, this is a right handed rifle. Okay, so you can see the cheek piece has a swell on the right side and it's concave on the inside, it's called a rollover. Um, colours, well obviously if you're talking beach or walnut they're natural, if you go to laminates you've got different kind of variants, different colours that you can have with those rifles. What else can I say to you? Alright let's look at the butt. So the butt pad itself um, is cushioned but it's fixed that's not going to go up or down so there's no in or out movement on that one the grip is actually right handed it's it's a comfortable grip it's got a nice palm swell it's not excessive it's not something like um, an R12 from BSA which seems to be very very bulbous this is just a nice comfortable grip it suits a wraparound style where you take your thumb right round although you can position your thumb sort of in the shooting you know a thumb up position however there's there's a bit of a, a gap there it doesn't it doesn't feel so good to shoot it that way um, yeah with regards to the checkering I've got to say it's really really pretty it's nicely done it almost has a snake skin feel to it as opposed to just a standard laser cut yeah it's, it's a nice bit of woodwork it really is the um, sorry let me just carry on going here with regards to the chassis well it's mainly steel um, it's the bluing on it I have to say bluing they call it blacking actually on AA's website the blacking on it is superb it's very very nice except I will say that even though this is in mint condition the grip on the underlever here is starting to show a little bit of um, I'm not going to say it's rust it's, it's kind of discoloration between the grooved grip part uh, but apart from that it's absolutely mint it's really really very very good no two ways about it um, and I'm making sure that every time I put my hands on this gun I'm giving it a good polish and a wipe afterwards because the last thing I want to do is leave any acid from my skin on here which could affect that finish it is superb um, 
What I will say though, which is markedly different to the HW77, is the loading port here is like a two-third cutout as opposed to a full cutout that you'll see on the 77. And there is an anti-bear trap mechanism here as well. So as you cock the rifle, you'll see that within these three grooves that can engage this anti-bear trap mechanism so it can hold it. When I show you the footage of me shooting outside, you'll hear me talk about how this performs. And I'm gonna go into that in a little bit more detail towards the back end of this review. So I don't, I don't wanna kind of talk about it too much now. And I don't want to repeat myself too often. With regards to the trigger, it's made from metal. It's an adjustable two-stage trigger. Um, again, I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. And the safety, which is well away from the trigger, is here, where my finger is. It's an automatic safety. So once you cock the rifle, but cock it fully, that will engage the safety. Um, and it's really important that you do cock it fully, because if you try to return the lever without that safety engaged, you'll feel that lever is still under pressure. So it's almost allowing you to decock the rifle as, as you're going along. Um, be mindful of that, because if you've got a loose grip and you go to release it without cocking the safety mechanism properly, that can slam shut on you, so be careful with that one. Obviously, it's single loading. There are no open sights. What you see is what you get. The scope rail on top of the chassis is a dovetail. Um, 225mm long or 8.86 inches. The rail width is 10.98mm or 0.43 of an inch. And the offset, so the line of the rail with regards to the top of the barrel, um, is 551 millimeters or 0.2 of an inch now i've already stated that the barrel itself is made by loafer wolfer um, <laughs> now on aa's or air arms's website they state that the barrel unit length is 319 millimeters bit deceiving because the barrel length itself is actually only 243 millimeters or 9.57 inches it's about there the rest of this is basically space in which the moderator can screw into and it has it's actually internally threaded within the shroud and I am going to call that a shroud because that is a shroud that's not the barrel the barrel is um, seated within that and you can see when you open up the port you can see how the barrel has been bolted in or screwed in so as I say that's the moderator so it's internally threaded within this housing for the barrel so we're going to call it a shroud and as I say again slightly misleading by air arms why they can't just state the actual barrel length no idea but I'm guessing because it's so short if customers knew that it was only 243 mil long but that's not far off of a pistol to be honest um, yeah it's it's a very very short barrel in this, in this rifle um, I'll tell you the difference so we've got the 77 here, the actual barrel length on this from the muzzle to the breech is 370 millimeters. Those extra 130 mil or 127 mil makes a big difference when it comes to accuracy, especially when you're shooting out at a distance. And remember, that's the carbine version, as is this. If you were to get the, um, the full length version of this, the uh, barrel unit length is, let me get this right, I think it's 395 mil, uh, 395 millimeters, yeah. But what you have to understand is that 
actually with that setup I don't think it is the same as this no I think it's just the barrel that goes the full length but here yeah it, it is it is very deceiving in my mind very very deceiving um, shroud diameter on here 19.86 millimeters or 0.78 of an inch and I'm going to give you another measurement as well which is slightly different than the norm the actual cocking lever on this rifle is 235 millimeters long or 9.25 inches so if you can imagine where that works that set forward of the actual barrel it's roughly the same length as the barrel but it's it starts from there now that cocking lever when I was using the rifle outside and again look at the footage but for me it could do with being another 100 mil longer or another four inches but it all will come clear shortly so guys that is the um, tech specs over and done with what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you footage of me shooting the rifle outside and see what you think I've given it my best go I'm very conscious of the fact that some of you may feel that I'm heavily biased towards the H77 sorry HW77K so I've made allowances and that will come clear in the in the footage as well I'm trying to give this my very very best shot all right um, I'll catch you back in here afterwards so how would you or your family cope if you were to die, become terminally ill or diagnosed with a critical illness? By protecting you and your family when you need it most, our main focus and priority is you the customer when it comes to your insurance needs. Our team of protection advisors are extremely experienced so don't hesitate to call now and arrange a no obligation confidential appointment. At InsureRight, we put you first. Well we finally got a break in the weather. As you can see it's nice and still there is a bit of a breeze coming from right to left but nothing that this rifle shouldn't be able to cope with this is the air arms tx 200.177 and it's sub 12 foot pound um it's taking a little bit of time to get used to i've kind of zeroed in my scope and i've noticed there's a few things straight off the bat that are different to my hw77k and that's in the cocking of this rifle these it takes actually quite a bit of effort to get it past the initial cocking and then engage the safety it's almost like a two-stage affair and if you don't engage that safety when you try and release the cocking arm you can feel it's under tension as you're putting it back so you've got to make sure that's engaged properly um, what can I say I'm gonna start off with the pellet test first I'm going to use five different types of pellets. I've got the Air Arms Diablo Fields, Diana High Power, Bisley LRGs, Long Range Golds, JSB Match Diablo Exacts, and lastly the Remington Thunder Barracudas. On the left hand piece of paper, there are five targets. I'm going to do a group of five shots in each target. I'm going to start off with the Diablo Fields and once I've done my pellet test I'll select the pellet that I like and I'll use that for the accuracy test. So we'll make a start shall we? Air Arms Diablo Fields, these are 8.4 grains, uh, 0.547 grams, 0.177. So let me just uh, open up the lid if I can. Never easy one handed. There we go. Right. So to cock the rifle, simply it, grab the lever. Now this is where I'm trying to say to you about the two stage effect. Now ordinarily I would think that's cocked, but the safety hasn't been engaged. Now I know that if I try to release this spring, that is under that cocking arm is under pressure. So effectively it's allowing me to decock the rifle. Now if I want to properly engage it, another couple of clicks, 
and the safety engages. And I'm definitely making sure I'm holding on to the cocking lever here. And then you have to release the cocking lever by pressing in this button and sliding back up. Um, bottom left hand target, group of five. Be handy if I disengage the safety. <coughs> And it does seem to take considerably more effort to cock this than the 77. Safety's off. Two. Yeah, I'm still struggling with this second part of the cocking. I'll get used to it though. Safety's off. Right. That's the air on Diablo Fields. So, next up, I'm just going to put my rifle down. Diana High Power. These are 4.5 mil. It doesn't tell me what grains they are. And this time we're going to go for the bottom right hand target. considerably lower to the left remember this is only a pellet test so we're all about groups we're not about where it's ah come on By the drop on the pellet you'd imagine or you can conclude that these are much heavier than the uh, Diablo fields it's the third bit tighter in the breech Fourth. 
fish. Right. Gonna have to put the gun down to unscrew the top, uh, the top of this. Next up, busily long range goals, and we'll go for the centre target. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. I pulled that one. Right, next up we've got the Jazz B Match Diablo Exacts. These are um, 8.44 grain. And I think we'll go top right hand target with this one. Starting to get a little bit cold now. Well. Three. Five. Okay, that looks like a contender. And then last up. There we go. Um, Remington Thunder Barracudas. Again, there's no weight on those. So we go top left hand target for that one. Nice shiny pellets. Good if I don't throw them around.
There we go. Top left hand target. Five shots. Very low. Quite consistent with it. Can't get over that second stage where you've got to cock it down again to engage that safety. Don't like that. Really don't like that. And I think um, a smaller person, slighter build, would struggle actually to cock it. The last shot. Okay, interesting. Um, so, although they were shooting low and to the left, the group was consistent. I still think that I'm going to go with the JSB match Diablo exacts for the accuracy test um, it's getting a little bit cold so I'm just going to check my cameras make sure they're all functioning properly and if they are we'll go on to that test okay everything looks good so what I'm going to do is count out uh, nine pellets that's five six seven eight nine the reason why i'm counting out nine pellets is because on the right hand piece of paper there are five targets i'm going to put a pellet in each of the outer targets like i normally do and i'm going to do a group of five shots in the center target so again guys we're using the jsb match diablo exacts right hand piece of paper So, first shot, bottom left hand target. <clears throat> bottom right hand target Top right hand target. Mm. 
<clears throat> that went way out. And everything felt nice then when I took that shot. Top left hand target. And now for the group of five. That's three. Oh, God. Last oh, shot. Right, um, yeah, what can I say? It's not my favourite. I know there's a lot of people that rave about the TX200 saying it's the best Springer out there. Um, I'm struggling with it, I've got to say. It, it's not that I've got a bias towards it, please don't get me wrong. I am honestly giving it my all. I'm really struggling cockling the rifle because of this two-stage affair. What I think I am going to do, just to try and make it a little bit more, I don't know, even, I'm going to um, redo the top right and the top left shot, okay? Um, because they are a way out from the ball. I'm going to make allowances in case it's my technique for shooting. Um, there's no wind, so we'll give it, we'll give it another go, um, just for those two top targets, see if I can get any closer really struggling with this cocking mechanism uh, it's just odd that you seem to have to go to an end and then you've got to push it some more and I'm not oh, pull it some more sorry I'm not kidding it takes quite a bit of effort to get there uh, but yeah let's let's just in fairness in case of my technique let's just redo that top right and that top left shot and see how it uh, see if we can improve on those two targets so that's you see that you would imagine would be cocked and it's not because it's still in live mode you've got to then click it one more time and that's safety on so top right hand target And 
Top left hand target. There you go. All right. Um, last shot of the day. Couldn't get closer to the bull. Yeah. All right. So it's probably my technique that's affecting the shooting. Um, I'm not finding it as comfortable as my 77, that's for sure. Is it accurate? I don't think it is. I don't think it's as accurate as, as the 77. I, I just, for me, it's hard work. Um, it's hard work to cock it. The balance seems a little bit off. I actually took the moderator off because I think that was affecting the shot as well, the accuracy. And the loading port, because it's a half out, a half cutout, based to the right hand side, and you, you don't seem to have that much room, um, I took the sunshade off my scope just to make it easier so I could feed that pellet in. It definitely prefers the Jazz B Match Diablo Exacts, although in fairness it weren't grouping too bad with the other pellets. Um, the Thunder Barracudas put up a good show, even though they were low and to the left. I wonder, you know, if I had time, whether I could actually get used to it. But I will say this, it does appear to have a much shorter barrel than the um, than my 77. That's for sure. And because it's sort of threaded, yeah, I, I'm not sure where the barrel stops, but it certainly doesn't go to the end of the uh, the tube because that's threaded internally to take the moderator so it's only a short barrel what's that a foot 12 inch I'll measure it properly when I get inside and I'll let you guys know is it is it me I don't know um, I'm really really kind of conscious of the fact that there's been so many people saying it's a fantastic rifle and you know they believe it to be the most accurate that there is so I'm trying to give it my best shot you know I finished off nicely that last shot was was a cracker it was absolutely corking but it's taken me well over what have we got uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 plus a couple of cars before that 50 it's taken me well over 100 shots to get there that's for sure right guys uh, yeah, let's let's finish up in the studio. I'll see you soon. Okay, back inside, and that was me shooting this TX 200 HC out at 30 meters. Couldn't have asked for better weather conditions. Uh, slight breeze, right to left, but nothing to worry about. And obviously, it was dry. Uh, first decent day we'd had in a long time. So really, really pleased to be able to get out and shoot. Um, Obviously, what you're going to see now is my opinion and my experience of using this um, TX200. You guys, if you've got your own rifles and you experience something different, well then let me know. Please keep the comments clean. If I see any profanity, they're just going to be wiped and you're going to be blocked from the channel. If you don't like what I say, well, you know, that's fair enough. You've got your own opinion. But please, when you voice those opinions, keep it clean. Now, what can I say about this? Well, let's um, let's start off with obviously the accuracy and performance side of things. Um, I have the targets here, so the pellet test and the accuracy test. Uh, with regards to the pellet test, yeah, it, it basically handled all of the all of the pellets okay. Um, I think the one that it Apart from, well, I was going to say apart from, 
It didn't perform as well as I'd expect it to with the Air Arms Diablo fields. There's a little bit of a scatter there. Um, and also the LRGs from Bisley. But you saw me settle for the JSB Match Diablo Exacts, 8.44 grains, because it gave me the tightest group. And it's just a shame that I had one of the five drop a little bit. With regards to the accuracy test itself, um, yeah, I'm glad that I took shots three and four again, retook them. I think that was the right thing to do. Um, fairly okay. It's still, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's not as, as good as everybody was making out that it's going to be. Um, whether that was to do with the fact that I was having issues with the cocking of this rifle and that's a little bit frustrating because obviously you know when you get yourself into the into the groove you want everything to, to be consistent and it's a little bit frustrating when you go to cock that rifle and then you've got to cock it a second time in order to uh, activate that safety so that you can safely release that uh, cocking arm it has its it definitely has its quirks and that's something that you've got to get used to no two ways about it for me and I keep referring back to the HW77K because I've been asked to for me the HW77K is smoother in its cocking um, and I've got to say although I'm going to talk about this a little bit more I still think the record trigger is the best trigger no two ways about it anyway let me give you the results so for accuracy the of the outside targets the furthest from the center of the red cross was this shot here and that came in at 11.95 millimeters and again guys remember this is this target was set at 30 meters okay so we're talking 11.95 mil out and the nearest to the center of the red cross is this shot here which was shot number um well it's the last of the shots of the day and that was at 4.09 millimeters from the center of the cross the group size overall 21.11 mil so for accuracy out of five stars it scores 3.8 now handling at 8.82 pounds um, it's fairly well it's basically it's fairly weighty so it should do well on the bench it's it's weighty if you're going to take it out all day as well but you know rifles I guess when they're built well and they're using high quality materials materials that are last you know that are going to last they're going to be dense and they're going to be weighty so it swings and roundabouts but with regards to um, handling it scores three and a half out of five stars for me the rifle performed better without the moderator in my opinion the moderator yes it knocks the noise levels down considerably and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute uh, but I believe it affects its accuracy and the balance is weighted more towards the front of the rifle so yeah unless you're resting on something you're going to have to hold that weight yeah for me three and a half out of five stars now you saw in the footage that i was having issues cocking and loading this rifle the actual feeding the pellet into the breech um, that breech is very tight. It only really light the um, the lighter pellets. So we're talking about the Air Arms Diablo fields. We're talking about the Bisley LRGs and the um, JSB Match Diablo Exacts. The others, being a little bit heavier, they were tight, really tight, getting them into the breech. They performed okay, um, but it just seemed to prefer the slightly narrower pellet the cocking whatever's going on with this cocking lever 
I am not a fan of. For me, it's too short. It needs to be another four inches longer, but that means a longer barrel, obviously, because the effort it takes to cock the rifle is considerable. And then that last stage where you need to activate the safety is even more effort. And I honestly believe that if you were to give this rifle to a, you know, a smaller individual, somebody that's not so strong, they're going to struggle to cock it for any length of time. I mean, if they wanted to shoot all day with it, they'd be absolutely knackered. I think one, maybe two hours at the top, that's it. Um, that's even if they could actually cock the rifle itself. So I'm giving it, um, again, three and a half out of five stars for that. The trigger, what can I say about the trigger? It's, I've scored it four out of five, okay? Um, I haven't adjusted it because it's not my place to do so. The rifle is for sale via um, Andy at a gun locker in Stafford, so I don't like to mess about with things. But this is a used rifle, this has been shot, and this is as, you know, it came to me, so whoever's been shooting this rifle was obviously happy with that trigger because that's how they've set it. For me, it's too heavy. For me, it's not as responsive or as defined as a record unit. Yeah, I, it, it's okay. Um, I've given it four out of five. I'm trying to find some good points here. Now, power levels. So, putting this over the crony, um, we have speeds ranging from 745.9 feet per second to 759.8 feet per second. So there was a spread of 13.9 feet per second. Using the JSB 8.44 grain pellets, it knocked out 10.53 foot pound of energy or 14.28 joules. Again, a little bit on the low side. So with regards to this rifle, it scores 3.5 out of 5 stars. Now, noise levels. Without the moderator, this rifle barks and it, it is loud. It's probably the loudest of all the springs that I've shot so far in that it's kicking out 90 decibels at the muzzle without the moderator. And that considerably quiets the, the rifle down. But I'm assuming it's as loud as it is because the barrel is so short. Um, yeah, and without that, this front section of the barrel unit, so the shrouding, just, I think, resonates the, the sound even more. So 90 decibels, very, very loud gun, gives it a score of 2.5 out of 5 stars. All right, do I think it's value for money? and how does it actually score on that? So this rifle is priced at 555 pounds used. At that price, um, when you look at the results that you're achieving, or I achieved with this rifle, um, it's giving me a score of 3.9 out of five stars. It's a good score, you know, it is a good score. It's telling me there's good value for money. However, new, starting at 719 pounds, UK, without a scope, so you'd have to get yourself a half decent scope to put on there, well, we're talking 150, 200 pounds. You're talking about near on the thousand pound mark. Um, would I think it's a good value for money? Not so much at that point, no. I think it's, it's too expensive for what? for what it is. I, I really do. Um, it is what it is. So, yeah, that's basically the accuracy and performance side of the rifle done and dusted. Let's talk about design and build. Um, aesthetics. Well, it's very pretty, that's for sure. The Minelli stock is lovely. 
the blacking on the rifle is superb. It's a nice slimline traditional sporter look, compact. Yeah, I've given it four out of five stars. I think it's a nice looking gun, I really do. Um, obviously I'm, I'm rating this particular rifle. Now there are variants that Air Arms uh, produce on this and they have laminate stocks or they've got walnut stocks and it could be prettier it, you know depending on what stock it's sat in so that score of four out of five could go higher but for me yeah it's nice I, I can't say it isn't I like the look of it I do the snake skin checkering on the fore end and the pistol grip is a nice touch very very nicely done I do struggle with all of this scroll work though. I think it gets just a little bit too fancy. Um, it's personal opinion, it really is. But I've given it four out of five stars. Now guys, if you've watched my previous um, reviews, you'll know how I feel about ergonomics. Traditional sports is never going to score highly with ergonomics because there's not a lot you can do to them. They don't give that adaptability once you've bought it. And for me, ergonomics is all about how adaptable an item is after you've purchased it, okay? Not its initial design. This is a right-handed stock, a right-handed gun, so it's limited. It's not ambidextrous. There are no rails on the forend or the fore stock there's no adjustable butt pad there's, there's nothing more than you can really do with this rifle it is what it is so it's always going to score low just the nature of the beast with that in mind it scores 2.7 out of uh, 5 stars ok the redeeming feature and I think everybody will agree on this one is build quality so this is a used rifle and if you look at the metalwork it's it's way up there it is so nicely finished um, the blacking is superb I've got to say that it's probably the best blacking I've seen on any rifle the stock you know is of high quality but you'd expect that from Minelli the barrel, it's a loaf of wolf barrel, so you can expect it to be well made. Um, and the air system itself, I've given it, I've given it basically five out of five across the board. Um, for build quality, yeah, I'm going to have to because it's it's just put together very very well, and it's obviously built to last. Now safety so with regards to the design of the safety on this rifle it's scoring 4.3 out of 5 stars the only reason why it's not 5 out of 5 is because of that second stage cocking it's an absolute nightmare you you know you cock the rifle first and you think that's it that's all you have to do but then you have to pull it that little bit harder in order to engage that safety um, I'm not sure why it is the way it is. Maybe it's compact design has made it so that having a short lever to cock this rifle means that you have to put in much more effort than you would say the 77K or a standard rifle. Um, that's the only reason why I'm knocking it because it's an automatic safety big thumbs up for me especially with hunting rifles I think they're very very important it's, you know you're going out on the field you've got a loaded weapon accidents can happen so yeah fantastic automatic safety brilliant the safety is away from the trigger another plus for me brilliant it's just I wish it engaged a little bit easier simple as that so guys, that's basically the review over and done with. And here's the surprise, because I, obviously I use a scoring system, um, and you'll see the leaderboard up in a minute. I'm gonna, I'll pop that up on my 
right hand side, your left hand side of the screen shortly. But I was shocked when I tallied up all the figures and got a mean score for this rifle because it came out at 3.8 out of 5 stars. The exact same score as the HW77K. So overall, what it's telling me is it's no better, nor is it worse than the 77K. They're scoring the same. The levels of the scores that they achieved in the different categories have altered, but overall, 3.8 out of 5 stars. It's a tie. So if you look at the leaderboard now, it's going to pop up on the screen, you'll see where it's coming and there's a bunch of rifles there at the 3.8 um, level so they're kind of joint in that position or level in that position um, but the question is I suppose would I shoot this or prefer this over my HW77K and I think you know the answer to that it's unfortunately a no for me um, I guess if this is the first rifle of its type that you've purchased and you've got used to using it I guess that you know you'll be happy with it and it's going to perform well for you but if you've had the opportunity to try different rifles or you've got the opportunity to try different rifles then check out the Firearc range as well um, and the uh, the LGU um, if you get your hands on one of them because they give you viable options you know something that might just change your mind anyway guys that's this review over and done with thank you very much for joining me again if you haven't done so already please subscribe and if you want to get some merch you can do just you know check the link out down below uh, and you'll get to see some of the items that we've got for sale now um, I guess all that's left for me to say is happy new year to you all and thank you very much for you know your continued support um, the next review coming up is going to be on uh, this beast it's a harrier and I've been wanting to give this one a little bit of a go for a while now. Now that rifle is a target rifle and uh, it's owned by Andy himself. He's actually won quite a lot of competitions with that. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to be entering HFT. I'm going to be doing it with my 77K, but let's see what a decent quality target rifle can do as well. But again, old school. Anyway. Thank you very much for your time and as always, stay safe, shoot safe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.